Aloha, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka. I am the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and welcome to today's Think Tech Hawaii segment, Restaurants Hawaii. Today's date is August 10th, 2021, and it's lunchtime in Hawaii, Maine. Today we're having a conversation with a Maui restaurateur and Siobhan Garcia, who is our Executive Assistant for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Siobhan, could you please introduce Greg? Yes, so I want to welcome back Greg Ames. He is the Vice President of Operations at the Maui TS Restaurants. Welcome, Greg. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be back on the show. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Now, Hawaii is thrilled that tourism has returned after a very rough 2020 due to COVID-19. And to our visitors and local guests, restaurants really need your support. So please call and patronize your favorite restaurant, order a takeout or dine in. Even though we've seen business has increased in restaurants in the current weeks and months, Restaurants are still in a very big financial deficit due to COVID. The state of Hawaii had no tourism in 2020. So today we will be Maui focused and you will hear from our Maui restaurant tour what they are doing to currently, um, currently help our tourists and visitors get through the challenges as everybody's trying to figure out our new normal. So we want to talk about um, what restaurants are doing and what restaurants are asking of our visitors and locals. And we'll be discussing best, best practices. So it's been really a rough couple of weeks. As everyone knows, the Delta variant has now created a second wave of COVID positive tests. So we are currently seeing our, our numbers increase. And with that, you know, the same awareness, but more focus. So now, what is Maui's, Greg, what is Maui's restaurant's current COVID mandate? So our visitors know what to expect when they come to Maui. Sure. Uh, right now, the restaurants on inside dining, are, um, our number is 75% of our former occupancy. Um, so there's a constriction there. However, um, we can only space our tables. Well, our space, I'm sorry, our spaces, the space between our tables needs to be a minimum of six feet. So that really doesn't allow us to add a whole lot more seats for our guests. Um, by following the mandate, um, we, we definitely are trying to stay within the parameters that our government um, thinks are, are proper for the safety and health of our visitors, as well as the people on our islands. Uh, however, the recent change really hasn't changed that much. Um, our outdoor dining is completely unrestricted when it comes to occupancy. However, um, the outdoor dining does still need to be six feet apart. So um, that still has some constrictions as well. So when you're asking um, you know, what to be ready for, um, please plan ahead when you're coming to Maui. There's a lot of wonderful things about our island that you can still enjoy and in Hawaii in general. Um, However, if you want reservations at restaurants, if you need a rental car, a lot of those things, um, planning ahead is definitely a great idea. Always it's a great idea, but especially in this time when we don't have all the uh, capacity that we had in the past. Very good, Greg. Thank you for bringing us up to date. Each island has different mandates. So we want our visitors who are coming to Maui to understand when they look in the dining room, you know, six foot distancing. So you may see an empty table in between of two tables. Um, so, so let's discuss some of your um, safety protocols that you at TS Restaurants have implemented throughout all your restaurants. And why don't you share with our listeners where your restaurants are in Maui? Sure. Um, our restaurants are all here on the west side. Let's start there um, before we get in our nuts and bolts. Um, we have Chemo's down on Front Street, which is our first restaurant that was opened up in the 70s. Um, we have Leilani's and the Hula Grill at Whaler's Village. And then we have Duke's Beach House at Hanua Kai Hotel, which is a little north of there. So um, we have four wonderful restaurants on the ocean, all within not so many miles, um, about 10 minute, 12 minute drive between the, the farthest two. 
As far as protocols go, um, we identified that there was going to be a challenge when we reopened, back when we were frankly still shuttered. And our executive team with some input of, of others um, following CDC guidelines, uh, we created a COVID playbook back, gosh, I think we're, it was March, not of this year, but the prior year. So um, most of our restaurants were still shuttered at that point. And it's 16, 17 pages of documents of all the rules we were gonna follow. And um, we took that upon ourselves um, with CDC guidance. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of what, what came out. We have a restaurant with a lodge attached to it um, up in Lake Tahoe that's called Sunnyside Resort and Lodge. So we needed to not only think about the restaurant front, but even on the lodging front, um, which gave us sort of an overview umbrella perspective of it, um, which I think was helpful. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the practicality part of it, um, you know, obviously our employees are all wearing masks. Um, you know, our guests need to wear masks until they're seated at their table. And then anytime they're walking through the restaurant um, to restrooms, um, we temperature check at the beginning of every single shift. Uh, so every single employee, if you see them in any of our restaurants, we know they're not running fevers, which is one of the major indicators of, of infection. Um, we have a zero, zero, zero tolerance policy of anybody coming in feeling at all under the weather. Um, we, you know, we just don't allow that to happen. So even if a manager notices that, even if the, the employee hasn't recognized, hey, I'm not feeling great today. If a manager sees somebody moving slowly, they're going to go up and talk to them and say, how are you feeling today? Are you okay? And then we'll send them home. Um, we also have a really effective contact tracing plan in place. Um, our directors of HR, if we do ever have a positive case, which Fortunately, here on Maui, they've been um, few and far between. Uh, we have a, a really good protocol in place where they will call any employee that possibly could have come in contact with them. Um, we have many different scenarios of um, quarantine versus testing, and we're in really close communication with the Department of Health to make sure that we're following the most current. So. Um, you know, it's sort of a soup to nuts plan, um, we hope. We're kind of going across, um, across hopefully all the, the gamut there to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, I feel very safe in our restaurants. I, I feel our employees feel safe. And I hope that translates to our guests as well. I think it does. It definitely makes me feel more comfortable. As I mentioned, my favorite one there is Leilani's right there on the beach. So it's yes. pretty wonderful. Yes, yes. And, and it sounds like you have everything, like you said, covered all bases. So that's great. Now, we truly have. I, I yeah. left a, quite a few things out. So I didn't drone on for the entire show. Wow. Well, so even more. You know, one of the challenges I've been experiencing in, in my restaurants, and I don't know if you've experienced it, but, you know, we have people who make reservations and then they don't show up, Greg. So sure. I set a table for 10 because that's what the reservation was for. And I'm texting them. I'm calling the number because, you know, we ask everyone to please leave a number so that right. we can you know, get in touch with them. And we're calling them and texting them five minutes after nobody's picking up. It's not getting replies. The table's sitting there. As I've got a line out the door of people that are saying, hey, you know, I've been standing out here and I see an empty table. What's going on, right? So, sure. so I don't know what the situation is on Maui. Have you seen a lot of people who have made reservations and don't show up for those reservations? It, it's definitely something that happens. Um, I, I understand the frustration that a lot of our visitors have, that they, they come and you know, they're concerned that they're not going to be, in, come in, be able to come in and, and get a meal. Um, however, it, it does pose some problems for the restaurants, um, as well as the other visitors to the island. And, you know, here in, in Hawaii, we talk about aloha. Um, so, you know, when, if you're going to make that reservation and you need to cancel it, you're not going to use it. Spread a little aloha and, and let the restaurant know so they can accommodate some other folks. Um, we have a, an especially um, difficult situation down at Whalers Village where we have our two restaurants right next to each other and then another larger restaurant 
Um, so people will walk and put their names on all three of the lists. And then whoever calls them first, like bingo, you win. Um, so in, in that case as well, um, we just ask everyone to, to please, you know, think about, think about the other folks that are trying to come in and have some dinner and, um, and please let us know. Um, we're, we're happy to make the accommodation. Um, we just need to be in the loop because we definitely don't want you showing up for your reservation and we've given your table away because we didn't know if you were coming anymore and you were just running a few minutes late versus needing to cancel. So um, we're trying to do the best we can and a little helping hands great. Nice, thank you, thank you. Now the other side of it is we all are short staffed. So what is your situation, you know, your vacant um, positions that you have open? Because the message that we've been trying to get out there is for our patrons and our guests to please be kind and patient. You know, our staff, we're short staffed and they're under, you know, a lot of pressure because they're trying to juggle multiple balls at the same time. So what is your experience? I can tell you right now, we're down like eight positions. We're down a tremendous number of positions. Um, I say candidly to others um, that we probably could, between our four locations, hire 100 people today. Um, it's severe. Um, we had pre-COVID, we had 700 employees here on the west side. And when you consider the population of Maui, I think we're at about 150,000. Um, we're a pretty large employer here on Maui. Uh, so getting all those folks back into the positions was has been challenging. And in our industry, um, we tend to have a younger demographic for a lot of positions. And when our restaurants first shuttered here, I was I was uh, one of the few employees left here on the west side, unfortunately. And one of the things that I did was to try and stay on top of unemployment claims for our employees that were out. I'm working with our HR director. And what I saw over that time is that we went from all Hawaii unemployment claims to a few from California, then more from Texas, then more from Washington. So, you know, I, I pretty firmly believe that a lot of our workforce just couldn't make it for nine months and they were younger and they had other options, whether that's I'm going to go back to school or gosh, you know, mom and dad still have the room waiting for me. Um, or maybe this is a great time for me to go travel because I can't work anyway. Uh, so I just feel that disruption has really impacted our ability to um, get back to full staffing levels. On top of that, having the Department of Education schools closed last year to end um, school learning, I feel like that put a, a big strain on, on families that had working parents. Um, I'm, I'm not by any means disparaging the decision to keep the schools closed. I'm certain the Department of Education and the governor did the best, you know, made the best call with the information they had. Um, however, when you have a seven-year-old that needs to distance learn, I can promise you that you're not trying to do that and trying to hold down a full-time job. It I, just can't be done. Exactly. And, and, you know, many, the message is out there that, you know, restaurants is a really great place. If anyone out there is looking for a, a career or a new job or a change, you know, restaurants is always a great place to start or maybe make a career change. You know, you work in a team and it's always great to work in a, in a fun environment with other people. You'll learn customer service um, skills. And if you enjoy you know, working with guests. And it'll teach you really quickly that you can get up the ladder really fast. If, you, if you're dedicated and you work hard, you know, a restaurant is a really great place to be. Some, like you said, Greg, some people, you know, during the day are taking care of children or they're in school, but in the evenings when they can, you know, take shifts with the, with the loved ones or take shifts between spouses, you know, restaurants is a great place to work. So if anyone is looking for a new career, email me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. And if you're on Maui, I'll be shooting those emails over to Greg because he's got a few positions. Yay. Right, Greg? <laughs> we have a couple slots to fill. 
<laughs> yeah, restaurants is a really fun place to work and people enjoy it. You work around people when they're having a good time, right? So Absolutely. anyone out there looking for a career or a job, let us know. So now, Siobhan, do you have any questions for Greg before I go on? Um, yeah, you know, I think Greg and I have spoken before. Um, you know, there's a lot of first timers to Maui. There's also a lot of um, returning um, visitors. What would you say to those who are feeling a little discouraged um, with what they've experienced recently? What would you say to them to encourage them to come back? Right. You know, at the beginning of this reopen, I really, I saw it firsthand and, and I felt it. And um, I, I thought about the family that maybe saved up all their money to be able to take a once in a lifetime trip to Maui. And they saw that, you know, I can get a decent deal. And boy, this was on my bucket list. And then they got here and their only dining options were not the ones they were looking for. And um, that is, is slowly changing. Um, but back to what I said before, if you do plan ahead, um, you can still check those boxes. However, there's a lot more to Maui and to Hawaii than just restaurants and pools and those other things. Um, you know, we have some of the most beautiful vistas in the world. Our beaches are gorgeous. Um, the, I mean, you look around, I'm very fortunate to have a little view of Molokai out here off, off my office window. Um, so, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to do here. And um, I, I would just encourage them to focus on all the wonderful things they, they can do and then plan as far ahead as they possibly can and just bring their patients along with them if they, if they can too. Um, and, and know that the visitor industry in Hawaii wants them to be here, needs them to be here, and are grateful that they're here. And um, we are all trying our best to deliver on the, the brand promise that Hawaii has as a state to be the, the state of Aloha and welcoming. So that would be my advice. Very good advice. <laughs> nice. And you know, Greg, I've had a few um, travel agents um, agents call and reach out to us and I forwarded it to you because a lot of the travel agents, you know, they don't know what the situation is over there on Maui. You know, they visited Maui years ago, but they don't know currently. And so reservations, you know, as, as, as you know, that gal was trying to recommend where to make reservations and where is opened, you know, which restaurants are shuttered, still closed. And, you know, cause they don't know what's happening, you know, as of today. Right. right, August 2021. So thank you so much for doing this today because this has really been very informative for people who are heading this way. You know, we anticipate our tourism numbers to keep increasing. And of sure. course, Maui is a big island that has a lot of tourists going over there and, you know, we welcome everyone to come back. So, Absolutely. Yes. So now COVID taught us a lot of lessons, right? And so we all had a, a few months to, when we we're shuttered down, to think about, okay, what could we do to improve our businesses and what kind of technology or, or systems can we do? Was there anything that you did over there on Maui to improve your um, dining experience so that our, our viewers can hear some of the um, creative things that you've implemented, whether it's technology sure. or processes? Sure, uh, quite a few. <laughs> uh, you know, one, one of the things we began to focus upon more here in this last year is giving more options to our guests. Um, so we've really ramped up our to-go and take-out program, which has been extremely well-received. Um, we looked at new packaging that holds our food better. We looked at items specifically to um, cater to folks that are looking for something to go where they may not be eating it immediately out when it comes out of the kitchen um, that holds well, you know, when they travel back to their hotel or down to the beach. Um, we've adopted some new technologies at our restaurants that, that help us um, improve the guest experience. And, and we're doing this really um, what I think is this really cool concept change 
at Leilani's actually that you brought up earlier where um, our upstairs has not changed. Our upstairs is full service dining, exactly what everyone's used to. The downstairs uh, we've converted to Leilani's Beach Bar, which is, uh, we used to call it the beach side grill. So Leilani's Beach Bar, very casual, but really embraces technology. So you can take your phone, you can bump it on a little tile in the middle of the table. You can place your entire order. Your entire order goes to the kitchen and goes to the bar. If you're ordering an alcoholic beverage, a server is going to come by and make sure that you're of age. And then things will be delivered to you and you can dine at your pace. If you're looking to go quick, you can get in and out of there. I went in there with my boys the other day and we had a lunch start to finish in under 30 minutes. Um, that is the TS, still has the TS feel. It's definitely the TS quality of food. Um, but we were able to get in and out quickly. And some people are looking for a full experience, uh, full leisurely dining experience, watch the sunset. And others want to get back down to the beach or get back to their hotel room because they're a little worn out and the kids are cranky. Um, so now we have we have that as an option for our guests as well. And that, that technology has been a really interesting piece. Um, we've added up and go at all of our locations, which is a, a way to... Uh, pay at your table so you can easily it's time for the check let's go um, we've learned a, a really interesting thing too about the spacing between our tables um, we would like to have uh, restrictions that are a, a little um, less constrictive restrictive um, in the table spacing but we've decided that that maybe things were a little too aggressive in the spacing in the past and our intention when we come out of COVID is we're still gonna maintain a decent space between our tables to make for a more gracious dining experience and easier, easier access for our employees. So, you know, technology lessons learned, um, you know, guest experience lessons learned. It's been um, a difficult process, but a, definitely an enlightening process. And um, we're just going to keep plugging away at it. We've made more, taken more risks and made more changes in this last year and a half than I think we probably have in the last 10 or 15 years. And uh, we're better as a company because of the changes that we've made. Um, definitely would like for COVID never to have happened. Um, however, I'm, I'm really proud of what our, our teams have done, our, our managers, our general managers, our, our dishwashers, our bussers. Um, what they've done to move our restaurants forward. I'm, I'm just really proud of their efforts. Well, you know, I've heard, and, and yours seems like a very, you know, um, top of the grade experience um, where you've taken COVID and looked at things where you can better your guest experience. And that is, that is wonderful. You know, so many people didn't take that time to look at it. So I'm so happy to hear that. It's the touchless experience. People are still very nervous about, you know, transferring things. So a touchless experience is, is, is excellent. Siobhan, do you have any other questions for um, Greg before we wrap up the show? No, I just wanted to, you know, he obviously touched on the point and that is um, there's so many options other than just dining in. So, you know, for those people who want the experience, want to eat at the TS restaurants, there's so many other options that you can still experience the great, amazing food that they offer, and they really should take advantage. So, Greg, is there anything else you want to say about the TS experience or anything else that your company has implemented? We've got a few minutes before close. Sure. Uh, you know, T TS is, is a family-owned company. I don't know how much all of our viewers know about us. We have um, what we like to call TS super fans who definitely know all of our restaurants and have been to all. Uh, however, we are a restaurant company that's a, a family-owned company, the Tebow and Saxton families, TES, um, own the vast majority of our company. Um, we were founded here in Hawaii. Our first restaurant, Kimos, like I mentioned earlier, is on Front Street, um, opened and is still to this day doing such wonderful things um, with the space that we have allocated for us. Um, we have restaurants on all the islands. So we, well, I'm sorry, we have the restaurants on three of our islands. Um, we have uh, four here on Maui. We have two on Oahu. We have two in Kauai. 
And then we have restaurants back on the mainland. We have five in California, including the lodge um, and restaurant up in Lake Tahoe. So um, there are a lot of different um, places that all have really great sense of place. Uh, that's always been really near and dear to our heart as a restaurant company. And our, our founders identified that very quickly is that our restaurants really need to fit into a community, not be forced into a community. And we always want to have locations where we would want to live. Um, our general managers and our employees are going to come from that community. Um, we're going to support the nonprofits and other organizations that need us in those communities. Um, we're going to be working with vendors that are going to be working really hard to deliver the best products within those communities. So um, that, that concept of sense of place and making sure that we're um, honoring that has always been very important to us. So it doesn't matter if you're at the lodge on Lake Tahoe and, and the restaurant in Lake Tahoe called Sunnyside or whether you're down here at Leilani's, which sounds like you're a fan of, Cheryl. Um, yes, but, but the sense of place is still going to be there. And, and what else that's overarching is that sort of TS magic that comes from our employees and putting all those elements together. Um, we were talking the other day about when we, when we look at how we run our company and the decisions we make, what would be the question you would ask yourself to um, validate whether that's a good decision, whether it's continuing an old practice or beginning a new one. And um, our two founders, they were, they were Sandy Saxton and Rob Tebow, the, the Saxton, the T and the S. And uh, what was decided was, would Rob and Sandy be smiling? Um, and, and I really love that. It, would our two founders be smiling when they saw what we were doing as a company and were we were upholding those values and traditions that are so important um, to our company, but also important to our communities and important to the state of Hawaii and, and you know, to California as well. Um, we're, we're very fortunate to uh, stand on the shoulders of giants over here um, in TS restaurants. Um, and um, yeah, we're just a lucky bunch. But we're really, to, to finish, um, we're really excited the travelers are back. We're really excited that we get to host them and uh, share some experience. Exactly. So in closing, Greg, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure again to see you. You know, you and I have only met virtually. One of these days we're going to meet face to face, <laughs> right? One of these days. Yeah, one of these days. And to our visitors, we are so grateful that you have selected Hawaii as your vacation destination, whether it be Maui, Oahu, Kauai, or Hawaii Island. Restaurants will always continue to focus on creating a safe and memorable dining experience for all of you, our guests, with the Aloha spirit. So with that, thank you everyone for joining to us today. We really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks, Siobhan.